It's Tuesday, April 16th. I'm gonna do a garden update. Got these kiwi vines growing on the fence here, a male and two females. And I'm hoping this year for the first time we get fruit. Blackberries here, an apple, another small apple, bigger apple back there, cherry, here's a dogwood flowering. Big pear tree. Pears are done flowering. This is an Asian pear. A couple flowers hanging on, but mostly done. Yeah, a couple flowers still. Asian pear, Asian pear. Some gooseberries flowering. A scraggly bush cherry. Some black raspberries. That's a European pear, black raspberries. There are a couple gooseberries tucked in there. Mulberry, black raspberry, mulberry. Gooseberry, another pear. Pear. That pear in the background, that guy, really struggled last year and, yeah, not looking good this year, which is why I planted these uh, different variety pears to eventually replace these, which I think are like 40 years old. Gumi, Nanking bush cherry. Uh, over in this island, what is this? Gooseberry, European pear, um, some sort of currant, black currant maybe? Nanking, you can see these Nanking cherries are already uh, developing fruits. Gumi, apple, uh, some more Nankings. There's one Nanking, not looking very good. This is a Che fruit tree, very small. Stay high here. This little island has a bunch of, originally it was just five honeyberries, but raspberry is kind of outcompeted. Raspberry coming out into the walkway here. So one of the honeyberries expired and then one, two, three, four, still hanging in there. This one's doing amazing. Sorry, bird. That one, not so much. Here's a fig. This is gonna, all the growth from like four feet up to 11 feet is from last year. So yeah, that's gonna get big this year. Autumn olive, freaking loaded with bees and other pollinators and smells amazing. And this thing has gotten tall, probably pushing Probably 20 feet at the at the tip there. But yeah, tons of pollinators enjoying this guy. It smells amazing. And here, a bunch of ribes, gooseberry, blackcurrant, jostaberry guys. Here's a small jujube, some strawberries in here flowering. That's a dead gooseberry. Uh, more strawberries. Another jujube honeyberry. A goji berry here. Another goji over there. And then this arbor thing, which I built. I guess the grapes have been on it for... This is their third year, I think. I think that's right. But I've got eight muscadine grapes, and they're all... They've thoroughly populated this trellis. You can see a bird had a nest in it last year. Honeyberries along here flowering. Tons of wineberries, which I've encouraged. The wineberries actually have helped the muscadine. Strawberries in here. I think I planted one there. That's already got strawberries forming. And he's walked all the way down to here in the walkway. Probably need to transplant that guy. Um, some of these honeyberries flower so early that I get fruit by like May 1st or first week of May. There's another strawberry. Anyway, yeah, grapes have done well. A couple that are struggling a bit, but for the most part they're doing well. Got some fruit last year, but not a ton. Uh, another goji. Just planted this apple. This is an Antietam blush 
apple tree a variety developed at the University of Maryland, I think, that's in theory well adapted to the mid-Atlantic. So excited for that apple to mature and hopefully help to pollinate the other guys over there. Uh, persimmon, 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 just leafing out. Two American and one's I think an American Asian hybrid. Um, I've got some potatoes in here. Like that guy. What is this? Creeping Charlie, I suppose. Or maybe Henbit. I get those two mixed up. Anyway, there are potatoes in here, but uh, whatever this weedy thing is, the potatoes will punch through, though. They don't aren't bothered too much. And then this is a Yakon, which is a sunflower relative. Uh, ground apple, or anyway, produces a supposedly a sweet tuber thing. This is my first year growing that. We'll see how that does. Gumi Juneberry flowering. Pretty, pretty white flowers. Uh, another small Juneberry, another Juneberry. And they're, they're around. That guy, tall one down there is a Juneberry. Gooseberry. There's another tiny Jujube in here. This is Hansen's bush cherry, which smells really nice. Again, lots of small bees enjoying that. And that one smells so good. Pawpaw, here's one of the taller pawpaws. This one's maybe, maybe five feet tall. Here's a pawpaw here, and that one's probably eight feet tall. And one of these guys, yeah, this guy's got flowers. You see the uh, pawpaw flowers there? I see three, four, five. So I might get some pawpaw fruits this year. Over here, this is kind of, this whole area is just invasive everything. Periwinkle, um, honeysuckle, autumn olive, wineberry. Japanese barberry, yeah, and man, like periwinkle, yeah, is lots of invasives, so difficult to, but here's like a black cherry popping up, there was a tulip poplar over there, um, planted this just last year, Virginia bluebells, beautiful flowers, and they also planted Udo, Aurelia cordata, I believe, it's a relative of, uh, Devil's Walking Stick, Udo, or like Japanese Mountain Vegetable, I think they call it. Um, tons of wine cap mushrooms all past their prime, but these wood chips are loaded with them. Um, let me go down here. I've got wildflower seeds. I only raked one of the three swales, which probably was a mistake. It's been very dry, so the ones that are Covered in leaf litter will probably do better in terms of wildflowers. Wine berries that I've encouraged. Here's that pawpaw. Pretty tall. These are Chinese chestnut trees. These two guys. Sorry for the swiveling. Here's a Juneberry that's maybe nine feet tall. This one's a little farther behind on flowering. Different species of a Melunciae or whatever. I get them mixed up or I'm not sure what's what. Um, some rhubarbs I planted in here. I had rhubarb in this exact same spot like four years ago and it died. I think it lasted two years, but I didn't water it and it didn't make it through the summer, but the soil has improved quite a bit since then. So I'm hoping that now these four rhubarbs will survive. Uh, I just planted this guy this year. It's a Rugosa Rose. I think that's the only rose uh, that I've planted. Multiflora roses everywhere. Here's more of this honeysuckle, just going crazy. Jujube, this is honey jar. This one's done well and always produced, it's leany, that's my only complaint. And I guess a couple of these branches are of the rootstock variety, perhaps, and not the grafted honey jar. Or maybe it's true to 
don't know. I, but anyway, it produces good fruits. This year I'll pay a little more attention to how the fruits taste on this branch as compared to this one. But so far they've all seemed delicious. Another gumi flowering. Beautiful yellow flowers. Gooseberry. I had another jujube here that <clears throat> was that died basically or was really struggling. So I ripped him out, put an American plum in. And I've got one more American plum uh, behind. This is a Montmorency sour cherry, another American plum back there. So, and then, well, I'll get over there, but I have a Chickasaw plum over towards the blueberries. Here's another Ambrotum olive, compost, fig, joy bush cherry, a Juneberry, some herbs in pots, pond with some iris, strawberries, uh, various weeds as well. Got a bunch of garlic going along here. So this line is all garlic plants, tons of chickweed. I do have a couple other things. There's some fava beans in the center. There, there was good stuff in here, but the chickweed, so there's like a kale, for example, arugula, uh, cilantro, a good number of cilantros in here that I've been trying to help out a bit. There's a carrot, I think that's a carrot, cilantro, anyway, uh, mostly overgrown. There's the rest of these garlics. Then there's strawberries on the far side, garlic chives, Egyptian walking onion. Um, I built this trellis thing this winter. In these beds, this is Chinese cabbage, I believe. I think the variety is Tokyo Bacana, but that has just been killing it. Mostly done flowering. They're gonna be a crap load of seeds. <laughs> uh, some arugula in here as well. I planted peas. There are probably maybe 10 pea starts along the base there. Some peas along here. This is a, sorry, am I pointing? Oh my, muscadine grape. It's I think the only seedless muscadine variety. So I'm hoping that will kind of dominate the left half of this. And then I put another hardy kiwi just beyond that blue flag. And maybe he'll, or she actually, will dominate this right side. More peas. Yeah, you can see how dry it's been. The soil's like cracked here, but some lettuce is trying in there, but quite dry. Um, finishing out along here, three Nanking cherries, two new dwarf mulberries I planted that are just, I think I noticed one of them was just starting to bud out. Kind of late as compared to the up there, what was that one? Girardi mulberry. You can see the leaves. Sorry, am I pointing right? I don't know, it's between the Nanking and the Gumi beyond it. That Girardi is fully leafed out. Uh, Aronia black choke berry. Black choke berry. Berries aren't very good, but it's a native thing. This. Oh, this is my Chickasaw plum. Looking quite, this guy's growing really fast. I just planted that last year. Or this year even. <laughs> I don't know, anyway, growing fast. Uh, I've got some raspberries in here, comfrey. That's a, so Chickasaw plum. I had a Hanson's bush cherry and that, I think is a sprout from the roots of the Hanson's that was there. This is a blackberry guy. And that's a raspberry. That's a Hanson's, I, I believe Hanson's that I did successfully kill. Hanson's I sort of tried to kill that's coming back pretty vigorously and sending up shoots everywhere its roots were. And then this is Carmine Jewel bush cherry. I just planted that whip this year. Um, I, well, beyond, so on that far row I've got Aronia, Beach Plum, Nanking, anyway, beyond that, or kind of, yeah, is, is another 
tall Carmine Jewel. And I only got like five fruits last year, but they were really good. So I planted one more Carmine Jewel. Eventually I'll kill off or remove, I, the Hanson's bush cherry fruits are horrible. So the flowers are amazing, but the fruits are not great. Uh, raspberry, a bunch of mountain mint. Here's uh, peonies, there's a blueberry. This, the fox kept digging holes right in this blueberry, so he's struggled. Raspberry, got some cardinal flower in here. Here's a strawberry. I think this is the red cardinal flower, and maybe that's blue cardinal flower, or anyway, there's some native flowers in here. Raspberry, blueberry, raspberry, blueberry. Blueberries are all flowering. These r raspberries have just freaking dominated in this kind of wet corner over here. So I'm leaning into that. I planted a couple more garlic mustard. Here's another raspberry. Planted one more blueberry. I'm gonna step over here. Um, so this is kind of my blueberry section. We inherited six blueberry shrubs. This guy is Come on camera, just thinking about flowering. Hasn't opened up yet. That one back there, I can see bees exploring. I don't know if, yeah, I guess the flowers are open. I see a bee up there. So, six big blueberry bushes and yeah, flowering nicely. Maybe they close up in the evenings. And then I planted five more. One, two, three, four, five. And then on the swale, the one that's struggling, two, three, maybe? Something like that. Anyway, lots of blueberries that are flowering nicely. Three gummies here, but I've had to prune back a bit to keep my walkway. But beautiful. Blackberry patch here with this put this wire in was that this full maybe anyway trying to keep them constrained because they definitely will escape those confines without the wire some black raspberry an old grapevine that keeps coming back um there's a pawpaw on that swale a bunch of currants some blackberries more ribes guys there's a red currant gooseberry black currant maybe another red currant had a honeyberry there that I killed underneath this big autumn olive, no big deal. This I haven't done anything with this year yet. We had cucumbers growing in this. Maybe next week I'm gonna try and do something with this bed, but for now it's dock, burdock, chickweed, purple dead nettle. And then I did at one point have a pretty healthy bit of asparagus through here, and I see I see them, some thin guys. Um I don't know. I never, I never watered this, and I feel like last summer they struggled. Well, there. I mean, yeah, there's some some tall, some two foot asparagus guys, but yeah, no like big chunky stalks. So I'm gonna have to try a different spot for asparagus. Um, I think that's. Let me go down to the very bottom real quick. There's a bluebird up on that chestnut. I think that's the bluebird who lives here in the garden and his mate with him on that dogwood. His or her. Sorry to intrude, guys. I'm gonna loop down here. What's in here? Mugwort, I think, is that guy. Some Jack in the Pulpit. Um, Narcissus. Daffodil. Some Echinacea here, and Bee Balm behind it. Wineberry. Some black, tons of wineberry, but black raspberries as well. Like, that is a black raspberry. And that, okay, they're, they're more they're more than I thought. Black raspberry, wineberry. I guess they're pretty easy to tell apart. Uh, wineberry on the left, black raspberry on the right. 
some multi-floor rose, but yeah, lots of black raspberry climbing in the fence. Uh, more black raspberry intermixed with wineberry spice bush behind it. Bunch of cuttings in here. This is a female hardy kiwi, some black currant probably. I had some gumi cuttings. Um, in here I've got some autumn olive, grape in the back, I think some grapes. Um, tons of fig starts, some chestnut starts, some sea kale on the far end, rhubarb, um, pepper seeds in that middle tray. A lot of these guys blew in a super windy stretch. A lot of these guys blew over, but that's alright. Some Egyptian walking onion on the far side, some leeks. We've been harvesting collards from that far side quite a bit. Um, let me keep going. Cornelian cherry, and I've got one more of those with an Egyptian walking onion beneath it. Uh, I've got three filberts, one, two, three, or hazelnut, and then another mini over there, about two feet tall. And then two American hazelnuts. The original one that's been, or well, one that's been here for like three years maybe, is the multi-stemmed guy there. And then this is a newer one that should pollinate that guy. Uh, elderberry. Here I am now by the Aronia beach plum, Nanking beach plum, Nanking. And this is the Carmine Jewel bush cherry, which is just about done flowering. And I guess final thing I'm gonna pop outside the gate while pruning elderberries over the winter. I stuck stuck what I pruned off. Huh, oh, there's a uh interesting uh Virginia bluebell. I scattered some seeds like two or three years back. So cool to see one popping up. Anyway, elderberry, elderberry. Hard to see, but elderberry, 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 elderberry. <laughs> so, a line of probably 15 of them. Um, which, I may regret that, we'll see. Elderberries tend to creep all over the place, but beautiful flowers and I haven't minded the two. So all of those cuttings are off. Not that elderberry, but the one to the north here, which I've, which does better it seems, so I've pruned it pretty aggressively, this guy here. Anyway, lots more of those. Well, yeah, and you can see, like, here, here is that elderberry walking. It'll come, like, here we go, this guy. This here is off that elderberry, so that's, what is that, 15, 16 feet? So, yeah, they're, uh, they walk around quite a bit. Okay, that's it. Lots of lots of stuff going on, but it's a lot to keep up with. It's, uh, nothing looks super manicured, but I just do the bare minimum to keep stuff alive. You know, occasionally come through and uh, get something clear of something else, and let nature do the rest. Loving it.